Hi, this is Doug Henshin, Principal Analyst at Constellation Research, and I'm here with Ryan Seeger of SciSense to talk about some of the key challenges I wrote about in my report, Next Generation Embedded Analytics Spark Digital Transformation. Yeah, thanks, Doug. Great to be here with you. Uh, again, my name is Ryan Seeger. I'm the VP of Global Presales at uh, SciSense. Now, Ryan, dashboards are now the default way to deliver insights but they tend to be standalone interfaces. And too often the users are forced to switch between the dashboards and the business applications where they do their day-to-day -day work. Now this hampers productivity and because the time of the user to be between logging in, finding the right dashboards, interpreting the right metrics, they may even forget the question they're trying to answer before they get back to their business application. How do you see software and SaaS companies helping their customers to move beyond this challenge? Yeah, it's, it's a great topic, Doug, um, and it's a, it's a really important one that we've seen every single day uh, at SciSense. Um, there's been a, a big evolution, like you mentioned, of standalone applications and uh, multiple tabs open for every business application or, or often multiple flavors of each uh, that the data consumers have access to, uh, regardless of what department they work in. And so step one for our customer base is often to take the insights and embed them into the business application itself, right? So that you're actually driving more of a streamlined experience. The challenge that we see where companies often fail there is that they'll drop in a generic dashboard and kind of say, have a nice day, there's data here. And in reality, it doesn't take into account that every user is a difference, right? They've got different backgrounds, some flat out don't understand the data or the charts that they're looking at. And so one of the most important things that we see in the market is a trend towards a custom experience for each user, depending on where they are and what they're doing. A great example would be SciSense working with a sales automation company, showing them where the vulnerabilities are, where the gaps are, and then making recommendations or showing them what good looks like in the peers that they have in the campaigns that are, are being used across the board that maybe that specific AE is not using. And it's giving them something that's actually actionable at that point in time, rather than just, hey, this doesn't look good, have a nice day. Well, that really leads into a second challenge I wanted to talk about, which is tying the embedded analytics into workflows, into applications to help users take action. You know, 10 years ago, too many companies were drowning in data. Today, I see too many companies drowning in insights. The innovators I encounter, they're embedding concise, actionable in, uh, analytics into the context of applications at crucial decision points. This helps the users make better decisions, do it more quickly, and they know what's what next steps to take. What are some examples you're seeing of moving from insights to actions? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's really becoming more of a unified experience, like you said. Consumers now, in regard to business intelligence or just data in general, don't just want to be shown there's a problem or, hey, this is going really well. They want to be told what to do next, right? And really led there. And so one of the things that we ask of our customer base a lot is, okay, that's great. These KPIs have been mapped out. We've got a general idea of where the data lives and how we can take that and move that into widgets and ultimately a dashboard experience. But when one of your users sees something, good, bad, or otherwise, what do they do? Where do they go, right? What do they click on? And it often drives a lot of really good conversation around, okay, well, maybe that's a settings change that I wanna make within my application or my portfolio, for example. Where is that? Should I shortcut to that? Am I able to make notes? Can I send off a Slack alert to a larger audience, right? And that's really the trend that we're seeing. The system showed me there was a problem. And now I have these three to five selections right in front of me on the same pane to do something about it. Let's talk about a third important challenge, which is graduating to predictive analytics, machine learning, automation. You know, let's face it, the descriptive and diagnostic analytics that kind of explain what happened and why, long associated with BI, those are now kind of baseline expected capabilities. The innovators and the fast followers I talk to want to look forward. They want to prepare for what's coming and take preventative action. Can you share any examples of more predictive deployments? 
Yeah, it's actually, it's probably the number one question that we get uh, on every call at least once uh, with existing customers and then prospects or even, you know, other analyst firms, right? You don't have necessarily a team of data scientists at your disposal to go in there and write R or Python. And even if you do, the way that that data is exposed, again, goes back to the consumer that you're exposing it to. Are they going to understand a scatter plot to make a proper decision or a Facebook profit library as in a, a selection? No, right? And so what we see is system generated insights and workflows um, on you know, our platform, for example, where users don't have to ask. It will show them what they have filtered and then it will also show them by running through a predictive cycle there what could happen next and let them plug in things like what if scenarios. The other really interesting point is it's allowing us to dig deeper into kind of like forensic level research on the things going on in the business. And so ML and AI allow us to surface insights to users, show them what could happen and then break it down into subcategories on areas that they should focus to change that potential outcome, right? And that's a really difficult thing to do on most applications or on data in general. In this case, it's really exciting because then you could see the future and could change the future before you even get there quarter over quarter, year over year, whatever it is that you're looking at. Ryan, you shared some great examples of next generation embedded analytics, but we're just really scratching the surface here. If you want to read more about emerging embedding capabilities and best practices, click on the link to download Next Generation Embedded Analytics Spark Digital Transformation. Ryan, any next steps you would suggest? Thanks, Doug. This has been great. Uh, next steps on our end would be if you have more questions about how users or industries are uh, embedding analytics today, feel free to reach out uh, to myself or to any one of uh, the members of my team, we're happy to jump on a call and, and take you through a nice system demo and, and talk about your specific use case.